Initiated by Prince Michael of Kent, great nephew once removed of the Russian Tsar Nikolai II and the master of the Grand Lodge, an exhibition of 3D models of the Kitai Gorod buildings destroyed in the 1930s has opened in the Museum of Moscow. According to Alina Saprikina, director of the Museum of Moscow, the museum managed to arrange the wonderful project due to their partner, Prince Michael's Foundation. Among the 3D printed models made according to existing drawings, one can see the Ilyinsky and Varvarsky gates of the Kitagorat Wall, Nikola the Wet Church, Nicholas the Wonder Workers Cathedral of the Grand Cross, and Standard Merchant's House. According to Ivan and Maria, graduates of the Moscow University Faculty of History and exhibition volunteers, they gathered photos of the destroyed buildings from our caves. These young people also prepared a discussion on the alternative development of Moscow's architecture in the 20th century and a series of excursions around the Kitaigorod area. The visitors to the exhibition are also invited on a virtual walking tour around Strasnoy convent. Having received a grant from the Russian Scientific Foundation, the young scientists from the MSU's Faculty of History using BIM technologies have been recreating one of the most ancient Moscow nunneries. We reconstructed the same place in Strasnoy Monastery. According to Maxim Mironenko, a member of the historical faculty of the Moscow State University, Strasnaya Square and the nunnery itself have been reconstructed for three different periods of time, 1700, 1830 and 1910. Lions adorning gateway posts and on the crosses jackdaw hosts. Just opposite the Strasnaya nunnery, a monument to Pushkin was initially installed. Facing the nunnery, it depicted the people's understanding of the great Russian poet. During the Patriotic War of 1812, when Napoleon's army was hastily leaving Moscow, a service was held in Strasnaya for prayers to get rid of the foreign invasion. The first church on the future Strasnaya Square was founded by Tsar Mikhail Fedorovich, and that is why Prince Michael, who got his name in honor of Mikhail Alexandrovich, Tsar Nikolai II's younger brother, in favor of whom Nikolai's abdication was signed, included the virtual reconstruction in the exhibition. According to Michael George Charles Franklin Binzer, Duke of Kent, the beautiful buildings in the Katagorod area, built by Russian and foreign architects and talented craftsmen, belonged to the time of his forefather's reign. The majority of the exhibition's buildings had been situated in Zaryadia before the 1856, the only place in Moscow where Jews were allowed to live. That is what the media of that time wrote. There is a really Chinese wall surrounding the Moscow's ghetto Zaryadia. Here the majority of our Jewish population live in modest, small, grey and dirty premises. Small merchants rented flats in the rental houses close to the low-rise wall of Kitai Gorod. The houses didn't have grand entrances and were built with long galleries with the door to the flats on either side. One of the most famous of such buildings is the ship house captured in Eisenstein's film Strike. This was the time when young financiers and Alexander's II government opened the country up to foreign investments. The epoch of speculative promotion, the so-called Gründerzeit, started, and by the end of the 19th century it resulted in the economy being under the control of foreign moneylenders as well as the majority of Russian industry. And the world's greatest external governmental debt came about. It is symbolic that when Stalin came to power and the national economy started to recover, a decision was taken to construct a building for the People's Commissariat for Heavy Industry in the Radia. The construction of the star-shaped 32-floor high tower based on a project by the Westin brothers didn't happen, but the district was raised to the ground. After the Second World War, the 8th Stalin high-rise was selected to be built there and was then reconstructed after the leader's death as the biggest for that time hotel in the world. Today, the Radia is being raised from the ruins, this time as a futuristic city park. The district is again being developed by foreigners and again the development project is attracting a good deal of criticism as historic buildings and architectural monuments are being ignored. Also the practical system of the creation of four climatic zones in the park is being criticized. What do the steppe, the tundra, the forest and the swamp zones near the Kremlin walls mean if not a future image of Russia seen by those who control the economy of the country as they did 100 years ago? Peter Larin, construction.ru